Sorry? Arrested and then what? Then... In prison? In prison, exactly. So what do you think should happen to gay people? What should the government do with them? They should put them in prison for life. Others should be killed. Everything bad should be done to those people. You think they should be killed? Yeah. A girl and a girl. It's quite disgusting, honestly. Yeah. It is. Or a man and a guy. But you were approached to be gay? Yes, I was asked to be gay and I, I refused. That's the truth. Just because I know that it's not acceptable. In Christ, it's not acceptable according to the Bible. I wish I had the right. I would have killed them. Killed them? Yeah, it's unfair. How can you get my to you from me? Do you think they should be killed? Mm, yes. No, what do you think is Okay, uh, well, this place really is homophobic. Um, everyone's saying exactly the same thing. I didn't think it was going to be this bad, but it is. All this talk about killing homosexuals wasn't helping my nerves, but even here, there's still a few people who refuse to give in. In London, the best place to meet a group of gay guys is in a gay bar. I didn't expect to find one here, but surprisingly, there is somewhere that tolerates people like me. Is this the only place that you feel safe in Kampala? Yeah, so far is the only place. Okay, there's another place that has started, but it hasn't really caught fire yet. Mm. But, uh, yeah, to other the... places, we are, we are somehow harassed, we are somehow abused, like that, we are somehow taken away, some, some, are, some are beaten. Everyone I spoke to was worried about the situation outside the relative safety of the bar. To be a gay person in Uganda, what's it like? On my side, on my side, it's tough. Because I'm, I, I want to get freedom, but it's difficult. In England, like you can, it's so easy to, you can be gay. It's a lot, everywhere is allowed, okay, but not here so much. Can I ask you? Yeah. Are you gay too? Mm -hmm. As the night wore on, most people forgot about the dangers and concentrated on having fun. Hi! Hey. How are you? Hi. Yeah, hi, hi. Hi. <laughs> Someone's grinding against me now. <laughs> I think, um, having seen what I've seen already, um, that these people are very brave to come out here and, um, and, and be in this bar. However, um, it is a really friendly, really fun place where they can just be themselves, like I can be in every bar in London. This is the only place they can come. I wanted to find out more about some of the guys I met at the Tea Cozy. So headed over to where they lived, a place called Boise. It's here that I arranged to meet Joseph and his friends. He told me to follow him, but was very nervous about the camera. Don't shoot. The area is very homophobic, and the last thing he wanted was to draw attention to himself. As we walked through the maze of decaying shacks and stinking drains, it shocked me how desperate the conditions were. But because they've been disowned by their families, thrown out of their homes, and nobody would employ them, dangerous as it is for gays, this is the only place they can find to live. So you see now, this is the drainage. How dirty it is. You see, some, they don't come at night. You will just squat here and then defecate in this drain. You can see the way it looks, the way it is. People must get ill because of the sanitation. Yeah, many of them. This one, he was admitted to Mulago Hospital. Cholera. Cholera because of the environment here. Oh. This is the toilet. Yeah, this yeah. is the toilet. Whoa. This is the... This is probably the worst place I've seen yet in terms of living. I've not even been inside yet, but it just looks awful. Um, so, in here, yeah? Okay. 
The slum is for the poor, the bottom of society. And that's where you are if you're gay. So how many people live in this room? Okay, we have five here. Two are sleeping there, one here, one here, and one down with that mattress there. We don't have blankets. We are having that only that one blanket, and others we are using those bed sheets there, which are not enough. And most can't even turn to their relatives for help. How many people here have um, been disowned by their families, and your family doesn't want to see you anymore? Yeah. And in that house, and that, that lady, lesbian. Everybody. Yeah. That is unbelievable. The people in the in the road. Area. Yeah, it's the area. Like me, is the most uh, because of that, I'm a gay. Even my parents, they, even if I call them, they cannot pick my phone. Even if I call my sister, they hate me. Even my, even my brothers, even my family, any of my family members. So the only family I have are these ones you are seeing here. We feel so sorry to have to that they, they, that they cannot accept us because that's what we are. We are gays, we are born gays, we shall live gays and we shall die gays. <laughs> Well, that was an experience, um, going to Boise today to see Joseph and his friends. Um, I've never seen anything like that before. The shit, the filth, like babies falling in the shit, like the smell in their room. It was just unbelievable. And the idea that they have to live there because they're gay, uh, because it's the safest place, relatively, is just awful. If, like, if you want to see, like, what homophobia does, then just go there because, God, just horrendous, horrendous. The ongoing prejudice and homophobia in Uganda is stoked by the newspapers, which regularly run stories vilifying and humiliating gays. I know the papers in the UK can be vicious, but there's no way they would contemplate or legally get away with printing what the papers in Uganda have been. Right, so this is the Rolling Stone, um, the latest edition which came out only a week or so ago, and with the whole list of people's names out in them as gays. It's not just them though, uh, this is a paper called The Onion. Um, they're exposing more gay people on the front page again. And this is the latest one. This is um, Red Pepper, who actually started all this a few years ago, and they're still at it. Um, this is somebody called Stosh. And if you look at the bottom, do you know stuff about Stosh and where she lives? Call us. It's a complete witch hunt. It makes me angry. I wanted to meet Giles Muhami, managing editor of The Rolling Stone. He'd been warned about a BBC crew in town and was very twitchy. But after numerous phone calls and waiting around, he agreed to meet us. Charles? Hello, Scott. How are you? Okay. Where do you get the information about the people that you decide to out in the newspaper? Mm. We carry out an investigation. For one year. We infiltrate in the circles. Uh, we compile the information from ex-homosexuals. We have so far published about 29 pictures or so. But is it right that those people have to live in fear now because of what you've printed? They are telling lies. So if, you're, if your name was, was in the paper, mm. are you telling me that you wouldn't be scared? I wouldn't be scared. Are you policing homosexuality? We are not policing, but we are assisting police to do their work. What gives you the right to do that? Because as a newspaper, if you know this, there is evil here. You ignore the right of privacy and smoke out the people so that you can save lives. Homosexuality is very, very dangerous. It reduces one's lifespan by 24 years. And that's a proven fact? It's a proven fact. The Rolling Stone is right behind the proposed anti-homosexuality bill. In particular, the clause saying that in some instances, they should be killed. You're putting it on the front page of your newspaper that they're bad people and they should be, they should be hung. You see, what they're doing is wrong. So whatever happens to them, the newspaper will, will never even feel any way bothered. You don't care? We do not care. Because what they're doing is not acceptable in society. It's not. We're exposing them. We know there is, there is a cost, there is a price to pay for that. But in the long run, the public will benefit. And that's why the newspaper is there, to serve the interests of the public.
Uh, met Giles today from the Rolling Stones.